Hello everybody, my name's Ryan and I'm a driving instructor. Today I'm going to talk about something really interesting that one of my pupils brought up. Is the DVSA failing? I mean literally, are they failing to do their own job? Not necessarily the examiners, that's a whole different thing. What I'm referring to is the DVSA waiting times and pass rates. The DVSA put their own pass rate target of 65%. They want to raise this target by encouraging people to pass a driving test. Now they pass a driving test is how they get trained or how they get taught or whether an ADI, an approved driving instructor, can teach them well or not, I guess. It doesn't always work that way. People fail driving tests for all sorts of reasons, often partly due to confidence and not really believing in what they're doing. Believing is a big part of passing a driving test. The thing about the driving test and the waiting times is, certainly in this area, Annick, Gosforth, Blythe, even as far as Gateshead, Sunderland, Durham, potentially Hexham. Because we've only got a little test centre. Um, I don't know anything about Berwick, never been there. Um, and I understand that Carlisle's a bit of a mess as well. Most of them have got at least a four month waiting list. My people said that they had to wait till January to get a booking test slot in uh, Blythe. That's not good enough. If you're ready now, how do I do a drive? It's September now. It's September the 7th, 2023, if you're interested, and it's 9.15 in the morning. If they've got to wait till January, what do they do? Do they stop doing lessons? Do they then go back to it? Are they then rusty? Do they need another 20, 30 hours? Maybe. Do they continue and spend thousands, and I mean thousands of pounds, on passing a driving test? Possibly. DVSA said, that they wanted to raise those test rate amounts. They wanted to raise that percentage. They wanted to raise the percentage because they weren't happy with it. They were trying to clear the backlog. They're doing two million driving tests a year. That's what I've been told anyway. They wanted the backlog from COVID, which was three years ago, to be down to um, around about six weeks by August. And this wasn't August 2023, this was August 2022 and it's still massive. How long would it take to clear all of this off? How long would it take to clear all of this backlog, do you think? Somebody online decided to calculate it and worked out that actually it would take till 2027 to clear the backlog. 2027, do your maths, four years away. So if you've got to wait six months every time you book, does that mean when you pass the theory? that then you've got to immediately book a driving test because you'll never get one. Probably. You can use an app, of course. Some of them are on there. Um, some of them are very efficient. Allegedly, you're not supposed to use them, but doesn't everybody? Doesn't everybody really try and get an earlier driving test? Cancellations, things like that. I'm sure they do. I'm sure that you've done it yourself. Why not? I'm actually endorsing it. I, I say, go and use an app. Go and get yourself an earlier cancellation. Go and get yourself an earlier test. Why should I tell you that? Well, I'm going to tell you constructively that you should book it at least six to eight weeks, so at least you've got time to prepare for it. So when you're setting up your app and you're working out when you want it, you don't want it next week. No, you're not ready. Don't wait. Don't do it a week. Wait for five weeks. Wait for your instructor to say, book it for four or five weeks away. Set a program up correctly. So we've got this massive backlog and it's continuing and it will continue, allegedly, don't know if it's true, four years. How do we cure it? Well, that's pretty simple, really. I think it's really simple. Everybody else thinks it's really simple. Most of the ADIs think it's simple. Bring more driving instructors in. Employ more. Employ more examiners. Employ more of them. But we're not employed, we're so employed. Going back to the other video I did the other day. We're self-employed, so we can't bring more instructors in. If we brought more instructors in, that would increase, actually, the number of tests required. So we bring more examiners in, which we should do as well. The civil servants, why not? They get paid 
all that money. They've on, what is it, 27% pension or something. Somebody told me 32 days holiday a year. Shouldn't, shouldn't we employ more of them? Maybe if we had a task force, I don't know. Let's say that we had a team of 12 examiners roaming around the country, a week at a time, maybe two weeks at a time, maybe doing like Gosford one time, then doing Berwick another time, then going across and doing, I don't know, Glasgow. Some of the people live in Glasgow. Carlisle. Maybe then they can smash those those rates, bring them right down, maybe get the waiting list down quite significantly. Maybe have two or three teams of all well, these are in, examiners floating around the country, clearing off these this backlog, this massive backlog. The thing about it is, is I don't think they'll ever clear it. I don't think they'll ever get it down. They're blaming COVID, and I don't think it's that at all. I think it's the organisation. I think it's the DVSA, and I think the DVSA is actually failing, like my pupils said. The requirements to pass a driving test have been the same forever. People are finding it harder now because they've got to wait another six months for a driving test if they are unsuccessful, which a few are. Pass rate at the moment is about 50% across country. Pass rate for auto, which is what I do, is 38%. My pass rate is slightly higher than that. It's not much more than that. Not because I'd send people to driving. I've never sent anybody to a driving test who I didn't think could pass. I've always thought that the people that I send up had the ability to pass a driving test. Never sent anybody who I didn't believe could pass. I think that what happens is people do get negative and do, people don't believe and they struggle with it. We look at the requirements for that driving test. We do it quite a lot. The driving test requirements are all sorts of things. One of four manoeuvres and possibly an emergency stop, a variety of roads, a little bit of independent driving, 20 minutes or so. Plus all the other requirements. But there's certain areas where you can't do certain requirements. For example, in Annick, there isn't any traffic lights. So you can't do traffic lights. There's pedestrian crossings with lights on them. There's no traffic lights. Does that mean that I can go from Newcastle up to Annick and pass a driving test? I would say no. You would need to know a little bit of local knowledge, possibly 20, 30 hours of it, and where you learn to drive is where you should really go and do your driving test because you know the area better and you've got a higher chance of passing. Don't change test centres just because somewhere else has got a really high pass rate. For example, that place up in Scotland that one of the YouTubers had done recently where... The pass rate was 87% and sent a man from Glasgow two hours all the way up one day a week and did tests on this really specific thing. When he looked at it, um, he said that it was a bit of an odd place. There was no dual carriageways and things like that. Which brings me on. Barrow in Furnace Test Centre. No test availability at all, ever. A town of probably your catchment area, 120, 130,000 South Lakes. No dual carriageways. So why do people want to go there and do a driving test? Because allegedly it's really easy. You only got a bit of town driving. Some people don't even get up to 60. Not even getting up to 60. To go and do dual carriageways, you've got to travel a significant distance for a decent grade segregated dual carriageway. It's the A590, it's up near the M6. It's a long way away. It's a long way to go to do dual carriageways and, well, in all the other areas, pretty much you do them straight away, even in Annick. Test requirements appear to just fit the area. If in Annick you do lots of country roads, if you used to do the, all the Elvick Test Centre in Newcastle, it was literally all city with a very little amount of dual carriageway when you went fast. The actual question of is the DS DVSA failing is one that MPs asked their chief executive about three or four months ago. She couldn't answer the question. She said, I don't know. That's not the right answer to give. I think the DVSA actually is failing. I think the DVSA is starting to fail quite a lot. This backlog's not going away. I don't know when it's going to happen. I hope that when you do go for your driving test, when you finally get a booking, you've got a comedy in it somewhere. You've got to laugh, otherwise you will literally cry. 
when you do get there. I hope you have a good look and I hope you pass. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you'll have that little belief. But just believe that you're doing it this time. Not the second time. Not the third time. Not the fourth. You're going to do it this time. This time that you've booked. Not in six or eight months. Hope you have a good week. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.